Hey y'all, it's Angela. Happy 2022 to everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful end to your year and an even better start to the new one. Today I wanted to reflect on some of the best and most disappointing books that I read in 2021. These weren't all published in the last year, but I found them in 2021, some for the better and some definitely for the worst. I'm the kind of person who likes to end with good news, so I'll start with the most disappointing books first. First up in my most disappointing books category is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is an adult fantasy series following two crime syndicates fighting over control of Jade production because the Jade gives its wearers superhuman abilities. You know, with this book, it really just fell into the category of it's not for me. A lot of people love this kind of complex fantasy work that focuses on crime and politics, and especially since this is about clans that are families, it brings that extra element of tension and drama. I just didn't enjoy how cold and one-dimensional the characters all seemed, and it felt like the writing was holding me purposefully at a distance. This was very disappointing considering how people have raved about the series and how hyped it was, but it is what it is. Next is Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. This is a YA romance about a girl who hires a fake boyfriend to appease her strict Taiwanese parents, but she ends up falling for the guy behind the fake boyfriend persona. My first issue with this book was that the romance fell completely flat for me. The banter seemed very juvenile considering these are college-age people, and their connections seemed pretty superficial, or at least it was presented in a very superficial way. My second and probably biggest issue was with how the main character's relationship with her parents was developed. Her parents were comically villainous, and by the end of the book, they remain largely unchanged, even though the tone of the book leads you to believe that they're somehow better or trying to get better. For that aspect to be such a large part of the driving force of the plot and kind of the selling point of the book, you know, for it to be like a really in-depth representation of a strict Taiwanese household, I really do feel like that the relationship between the main character and her parents went nowhere and the book just kept going downhill as a result of that. Next on the list is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. This is a romance about a woman trying to manage a retirement villa while having to deal with the property manager's son who's just started working there. I mentioned this the first time I reviewed this book in my wrap up, but my love for Sally Thorne's writing has just diminished with every new release she's come out, and this one was especially disorienting. There were three different plots all kind of happening in tandem, and it felt like I was in a race trying to keep them all on track and relevant. I did like Ruthie, the main character. I think she was very much like the bright spot in this book, but I did not care for her interactions with the love interest, who in my opinion, is just like, he talks weird, he just acts weird. To be quite honest, all the character interactions in this book were just a little bit off. Like they just didn't feel like the way normal people talk to each other. So I think that all those things combined definitely makes this my last Sally Thorne book. The next book on the list is Iron Widow by Xi'an J. Zhao. This is a YA slash new adult fantasy book about pilots who power these huge robots to fight monsters in this fantastical futuristic China. The pilots have always been a male-female duo, but the women rarely ever make it out alive from these battles. The book begins with our main character, who ends up killing her male pilot in battle and becomes known as the Iron Widow. Out of all the books on the most disappointing list, this one hurts the most. It really does. I heard about this book first from the author's TikTok, and the book just sounded like it had everything I wanted. The fantasy aspect was so intriguing. I love that it's set in this futuristic China. It features a polyamorous relationship, and we have a badass heroine who is literally dismantling the patriarchy. However, I felt like the main character loses her purpose halfway through the book, and the plot just kind of falls apart. The romantic relationships, though there's history, do feel a bit insta-lovey, and there's a much bigger focus on the media manipulation of this Iron Widow character that the main character has built, rather than a focus on the fun stuff, like the battles and the training. This book was just the whole case of me regretting all that could have been. Um, it's not a bad book, but I definitely felt disappointed after finishing it. And the last book on my most disappointing list is Today Will Be Different by Maria Semple. This book follows a retired TV show animator who 
is just a mess, to be quite honest, in every aspect of her life. This is written by the same author who wrote Where'd You Go, Bernadette? And in that book, I think she really perfected the uh, flawed character who's going through some stuff but is still a great person trope. However, in this book, the character is just an absolute hot mess. Like, without any context reading this book, I would have thought for sure that this was a satire about uh, boomers and Gen X just because of how ridiculous and unlikable the main character is. It continues to be to the end of the book. Uh, this book is for sure a skip. All right, now with the disappointing books out of the way, let's talk about some of the best books that I read last year. First up is Tender as the Flesh by Augustina Bastarica. This book is set in the near future where a virus makes animal meat impossible to eat and people start turning to eating people meat. It follows our main character who is the manager of a farm that processes human meat. I have never been so completely satisfied after reading a horror book. This one is near perfect. The main character's life is introduced in these short slices and you get to see slowly how people have adjusted to eating other people and how horrific the process can really be. It's a very dark and bleak book, definitely not for the faint of heart, but it's one of my favorite horror books that I've read in the past year. Next up is The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This book follows two radio hosts who, in order to save their radio station, start a show where they pretend to be exes giving relationship advice. I am such a sucker for enemies to lover romance, and this book had the perfect amount of workplace tension and conflict with a very natural transition into romance. I absolutely love the two characters' chemistry, so much so that even the dramatic, over-the-top third act didn't bother me as much as it would have in other books. The next book is Foundryside by Robert Jackson Bennett. This book is set in a fantasy world where a thief unknowingly steals a very powerful artifact that makes her the target of dangerous groups that control the city. At its core, this is a heist book, and it's so action-packed and exciting, just an absolutely thrilling adventure. The magical technology in this book is pretty unique and definitely flexible enough to allow for some very interesting shenanigans to occur. I also really like the main character Sanchia's personality and wit. Honestly, I think all the characters were very interesting people with very distinct uh, and unique motivations. The next book, or should I say books, is the Poppy War series by R.F. Kuang. This fantasy series is about a girl who, against all odds, tests into the most elite military academy where students are trained to fight in an impending war. You know, in recent years, I've never really thought of myself as a fantasy gal, but what do you know, two of my favorite books this year are adult fantasies. Uh, this series, man, it's so hard to describe how invested I was with the characters, with the plot. Um, the characters' development throughout the series was a big part of what carried the momentum of the books for me. I think it's so interesting to see how they change as people, and this book does a really great job at showing a realistic reflection of what war can really do to people. There's a big focus in the series on war strategy and politics, but not in that like dry, boring, extremely technical kind of way. And there's also this certain magical element that just adds that little bit of sparkle to the world building. Absolutely fantastic series overall. Next book on the list is This Close to OK by Lisa Cross Smith. This book follows a weekend between a man who almost takes his life and the woman who stops him. I really love character studies, deep dives into characters' background and stories, all of that. So this book really checked kind of all of my boxes. It focuses on the conversation between the two strangers who, in a very short amount of time, really make a huge impact in each other's lives. They both have issues that they're working through, and as we get to know their stories more, I love how the complexity of these issues really begins to unfurl. And the final book on my best books list is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This romance book follows two authors who are kind of each other's nemesis as they become temporary beach house neighbors. I think out of all the romance books that I've read this year, the dialogue in this book specifically is what really won me over. I had some genuine laugh out loud moments, or you know, at least a few audible chuckles, which is pretty rare when it comes to these kind of rom-com books. I love that their relationship and level of familiarity develops slowly and very appropriately over time, and this book is also surprisingly emotional and heavy in a lot of spots as well. It definitely added a completely new dimension to the traditional rom-com setup, and I absolutely could not put this book down. 
So those were my best and most disappointing books of 2021. Please let me know some of your best and worst in the comments down below. I would love to see what y'all have read in the past year. If you'd like to see more book content, book reviews, things of that nature, I have my Instagram, Goodreads, and Storygraph linked in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.